Tiro here for Ember Games with a review of Burger Time Party, released October 8th, 2019, exclusively for Nintendo Switch. I have pretty fond memories of dabbling in Burger Time back in the arcade as well as on the NES port. While the main mechanic stays the same in this new release, taking your chef across a series of platforms and climbing ladders and knocking hamburger buns, meat, and toppings off by walking over them until they're safely stacked at the bottom of the screen, you do so while avoiding other food products. In Burger Time Party, you'll find yourself doing the same thing, with hundreds of levels to play and with the addition of cooperative and versus play, if you so desire. I did play the whole game solo, and I feel like it could be a little more difficult to play with more people as you share lives, and multiple targets could make the enemy patterns a little less predictable. There are hot dogs that always take the direct route to you, pickles that look like they'll take the direct route but then end up taking the nearest ladder around you, eggs that just kind of go all over the place, and donuts that try to find the same platform you're on and begin charging you. If you're going for the campaign, there are three different sections. There's Training Burger, which is 20 stages of teaching you game fundamentals. There's an additional Solo Burger mode that has 30 levels. Then there's Main Burger, which you can play with friends and features 50 different levels, the challenge of which really doesn't turn up that much until the last 10. There's also a Battle mode you can play with 2 to 4 players, and there's a Challenge mode that can be unlocked where you go for the highest score through endless stages and try to get on the online leader boards. There are a few ways to delay your foes in reaching you as you try to build your burgers. First note, most stages have an endless supply of enemies that spawn at various trash cans. If you just walk over a topping regularly, you'll drop the topping down one level. If there were toppings under it, they too will get knocked down and start a chain reaction. If you manage to get an enemy to follow you onto the topping while you knock it off, not only will they be taken down with it and stunned, but their added weight will send the topping down a second time, also knocking down subsequent toppings. You also receive additional points for that. You get minimal points for smashing enemies under the topping you're dropping, but if you find yourself surrounded, it can be helpful to do this to force enemies to respawn. While you're lining up your shots, your chef, his name is Peter Pepper by the way, carries limited amounts of black pepper that you can shoot in one direction that will stop enemies in their tracks for a few seconds. Power-ups eventually start showing up throughout the levels too, including extra lives, coffee which boosts Peter's speed by slowing down the enemies, a hot pepper where you shoot fire but can't climb ladders while in use, and I think they were chicken nuggets that hold every enemy in place for a bit. So obviously the game wants you to do the dropping enemies on the topping you're on, as the level ranking is based on three different point thresholds, and dropping multiple enemies at a time on a topping will generate the highest points. This was a little discouraging to me because I found finding the most efficient path and trying not to die while doing it to be the most fun way for me to play the game, but that often just left me with one to two stars. In order to move past sets of five levels to go on to the next, you have to obtain at least one star in each stage. Levels can be replayed at any time once completed by selecting them from the menu. The game took me just about three hours to clear the 100 campaign levels and see the credits roll. For the majority of what this game tries to achieve, it's solid. I would say the only time it got a little bit frustrating was in the ladder climbing and not purely hitting the proper height to dismount. Some of the levels have some pretty close platforms, so much so that I was initially worried about hitting the tops of enemies' heads as they passed underneath, but it doesn't hurt you. So that dismount was very particular at times. While new features are introduced, colored vents that take you to other places in the map, icy ladders and walkways that take a second to build up speed and make it hard to stop, fire ladders and grills that will kill you in one hit, floors and ladders that break, and conveyor belts, it did really feel like there maybe could have been a few more mechanics and enemies introduced. But keep in mind this does seem to be designed to be more of a budget party game. I imagine other players bring quite a bit of challenge by themselves. Some levels are composed a bit more puzzle-like than others, requiring flipping of switches and literally sometimes just figuring out, how do I get up there? Overall, Burger Time Party is a decent reimagining of the old Burger Time, with fun graphics, a fair amount of content, most seemingly intended for multiple players, some well-designed maps, a ranking system based on score for replay value, and minimal challenge for a single player until the last few stages. Rated as a frantic puzzle game, Burger Time Party hits a 62 out of 100 on a 0 to 100 scale, where 50 is average. This is Jiro for Umber Games. Thanks for watching.